shamanism, paganism, and druidism from Europe, the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf states coalesced into a form of occult science. The formulation of magical spells became popular in the Greek islands, where mystery schools dedicated to hallucinogenic plants flourished for thousands of years before the birth of Christ. Archaeologists have uncovered magical papyri written in Greek which call forth spirits to aid healing, obtaining visions of the spirit world, exorcism, the attainment of beauty and love, and the destruction of enemies. These Greek magical spells influenced magical tradition across the Holy Lands and later influenced magical texts published in medieval Europe. The names of the spirits invoked in these magical ceremonies had to be called out accurately with the correct pronunciation in order to summon the correct spirit. In other words, the magician had to be good at grammar. And these European magical spells became known as grimoires which is an old French term for grammar. If you invoked the wrong name, then you would end up invoking perhaps an astral corpse or an imposter spirit. In the writings of Lactantius, he describes the thousands of lost spirits they are defiled and abandoned demons who roam the face of the earth seeking comfort in destroying men. They fell everything with their tricks and strategies, their deceits and wiles. Lactantius was referring to the incredible seductive power of spirits and demons. If you perform magical ritual well, choosing a time which is most conducive astrologically and calling the names correctly, then in the mind's eye of the magician, or more alarmingly, in physical plane view, perhaps in the reflections of a crystal ball, or forming a face in the smoke of sacred incense, you will eventually be confronted with the presence of a spirit. It's my friend, the master, devised this pretty little scheme as a way of getting back a horror to the eyes of all men who seek faith using magic. It's not enough, you see, to be a spirit. Today, some of the world's greatest libraries have collections of ancient magical manuscripts. Amongst these collections of manuscripts, there are personal diaries of several medieval magicians. Some of these manuscripts, or grimoires, describe that evil spirits, otherwise known as demons, can often first appear in a very seductive appearance. Perhaps these evil spirits will take on the shape of a small lost child, a demon may also appear as an old person or a beautiful person of either gender. A demon can change its appearance at will, and most demons actually appear as grotesque beings which combine facial and physical aspects of both humans and animals. Sometimes they resemble monsters with aspects of humans and animals all rolled into one ugly being.
If you want to see what the demons look like, then you only have to visit any of the cathedrals and churches built by the Knights Templar. They built churches and cathedrals all over Europe in the 11th, 12th and 13th centuries. So-called gargoyles are actually representations of the demon spirits described in the ancient book of Howling, otherwise known as the Goetia. secretly filming, well, sort of fairly secretly filming. They won't allow me to film in here properly. They keep harassing me every time I bring a camera in here. And this is a cathedral in the south of France uh, in a place called Narbonne. And this cathedral, like many other cathedrals, was designed by uh, the Knights Templar and sympathizers of the Knights Templar. Now we know through the confessions of the Knights Templar that they were involved in black magic and they had uh, idols called Baphomets and uh, you know really the, the big joke about these cathedrals is that people pay thousands of pounds to come on pilgrimages say from Germany or Yugoslavia or somewhere and they uh, pay thousands of pounds for a pilgrimage to uh, these cathedrals in the south of France and people think they're going to have a wonderful Christian uh, spiritual holiday. Well, that's uh, far from the truth. The, the truth of the matter is, is that this is a Kabbalistic temple and it contains carvings of most of the demons that you find in ancient magical scriptures such as the Ars Goetia, the Testament of Solomon, the Clavicule of Solomon and many of the other magical texts that have made their way into Europe uh, from ancient Babylon, ancient Chaldea, which is a province of Babylon, and uh, from Sumeria as well. Now, the people that run this cathedral are just basically just scamming people because there's nothing Christian here at all. You're even hard pushed to find a crucifix. A proper crucifix has got an image of Jesus. Well, these are few and far between in this place. There's no blueprints of this cathedral in existence whatsoever. That's nothing unusual. Uh, the blueprints uh, were usually sketched into um, plates of wet wax or wet clay and then they were destroyed after the cathedrals were built and uh, basically this is a place which is full of carvings of uh, devils and demons and all of the kinds of bad spirits that you find in these magical texts and behind me you can see a very very typical example now about three and a half years ago uh, this altar was uncovered and it's full of demons and it's full of devils and it's full of devils eating people and all this kind of thing and i filmed it a year ago and unfortunately uh, a couple of the curators saw me filming it and they really didn't like me filming it now in the year that's passed since i was here last time researching this particular cathedral what they've gone and done is they've gone and bleached all of these demonic and devil figures because when I was here a year ago they were painted in very gaudy oranges and yellows and blacks and reds and this kind of thing and it really did look completely satanic and completely demonic. So what they've done in the last year is they've gone and bleached all of that paint off to try and make it sort of blend in with the rest of the cathedral. The story is is that you know nobody knew that this uh, altar, I call it an altar of the Black Mass, uh, the story is that nobody knew that this uh, altar even existed and they were doing a bit of renovation work here and three and a half years ago, oh hey presto, oh we've all of, all of a sudden found this altar which is full of demons and devils and this kind of thing. Well the truth of the matter is this, is is that uh, many people um, who claim to be cardinals and priests and members of the Catholic
Catholic Church are actually involved in black magic. And there is such a thing as a black mass. Now, the black mass is exactly the same as the Catholic mass, except everything is reversed. And instead of praising Jesus and God, they praise Satan and Lucifer. And I believe that what we've got here is we've got a typical example of one of these cathedrals that was funded and built by black magicians, such as the Templars. Um, and we've got an altar here, which is where black masses would have taken place. And you see humans being eaten by demons and this kind of thing. Now, we're going to have a little tour as far as we can with the curators uh, keeping an eye on us. And I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, demons which you find in typical magical texts, such as the Testament of Solomon, the Clavicula of Solomon, and the Ars Goetia. And you can actually find all of those demons and devils in this cathedral. Now, um, before uh, we go on the tour, I'm just going to show you some of the features of this actual altar. And the thing to bear in mind is that this would have been used, this altar with the statues of the demons and the devil, would have been used as some kind of visual aid to a satanic priest who would have, um, you know, explained to people this is what the devil looks like, uh, you know, these are the demons and probably given their names. Now, for the Christian congregations, who were basically illiterate peasants who would have come here, they would have probably um, explained away the existence of this altar by saying, you know, this is what's going to happen to you if you don't give money to the church, you're going to go to hell and all this kind of thing. Or, uh, the other possibility is that nobody even knew that this altar to the Black Mass existed, and they may have even kept it covered up. It's not until you zoom in that you can really see how evil the whole thing is. There's all kinds of winged demons, griffins, devils. Um, if there's any humans depicted, then they're usually uh, depicted as being boiled or eaten, or having their limbs crushed and broken. Um, what about these figures up here? Are they saints or are they just... Well, they're meant to be, um, but, you know, it's just a, basically a cover story for having this evil mm. altar. You can see griffins there, all kinds of weird things. And then, yeah, at the, at the center of this entire uh, horrible altar, you've got this mouth of a monster with another monster inside and to the left of the monster inside the mouth there's a cauldron full of people being boiled and other people and there's people being hung as well. You may, you know, ask yourself what's this actually doing in a church? It's so evil. It's like a kind of medieval version of a Hammer House of Horror movie there's a cartload of people that are going to be probably eaten or killed in some horrible fashion. And it's important to remember that the Knights Templar were very, very much involved in the design of these kinds of cathedrals. And it's no wonder that uh, guilds of Freemasons were formed uh, and they secretly worked on, on these buildings and then destroyed all of the blueprints. But all the paint, as you can see behind, it was painted in very, very gaudy colours. And what's happened in the year since I was here last is that all that paint's been bleached off to try and make it blend in with the rest of the cathedral. I suppose in order to stop people like me from asking awkward questions. Now the cover story is that you've got, you know, some kind of... Uh, Mary and Jesus figure standing on top of the devil. But as far as I'm concerned, it's strange that this altar was covered up and not known about uh, up until three and a half years ago. All this says, there's no information about why there's devils here and this kind of thing. It just says that every, every Saturday you can come and sit in front of these demonic figures and these demonic statues and you can make cross signs over your, your forehead and your chest and you can think that you're, you're sitting inside a Christian church Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Why, out of all of these individual chapels in this gigantic cathedral, have they chosen 
this particular demonic kind of altar to have all of the Christian ceremonies. And the interesting thing is that right behind, and I'll just go over there, is that we have some very, very interesting skull and crossbones iconography. I don't think that's very Christian at all. Um, the expressions on these monks, if indeed they are monks, I believe that they could be Knights Templar. As you can see, their expressions are very, very strange. They're passing on some kind of uh, information to each other, or they're being given information, and the information they're being given is not to their liking. And there's some more of them here. These are very, very uh, sort of demonic, nasty looking kind of monk figures. And they don't look happy at all. So you've got six very elaborate carvings there. Not a single one of these figures is happy. Now, to the left of these six rather dissatisfied, uh, nasty looking monks, if that's indeed what they are, they look like black magicians to me, is that you have this even more scary face which is passed off as being a cherub. Well that's not a cherub at all. In the Ars Goetia that's known as Volvac or Volac and it's a demon spirit that appears as a child who usually rides on the back of a winged serpent or a winged griffin or a winged dragon. And uh, as you can see that that is not the happy face of a cherub. It's been deliberately carved as an evil face and in the left hand pupil you can see that very clearly and you say well where's the dragon if that's meant to be Volak or Volvac from the Goetia where is the dragon well the dragon is right here and there's two of them in symmetry so that does not fit into uh, the idea of a uh, of an angel or a cherub it's uh, it's very, very demonic, and that sits on top of a plaque which has very, very serious and nasty skull and bones iconography. But there's larger griffins and dragons and larger sort of strange composite creatures which resemble the creatures which are uh, described in ancient magical texts elsewhere in this cathedral, so let's take a look at them. which is described in the Goetia. The feet of some character is meant to be some pious uh, contributor to the church. And the curators really don't like me pointing out this kind of thing, but uh, that's obviously not a dog. It's uh, some demonic creature. And it's very, very typical of the kinds of things that you see described in the Ars Goetia. This is another example of the kinds of demonic things that are slipped in and unnoticed in all of these so-called Christian places. There's a kind of decapitated head. Uh, it's a deformed, strange head in one of these tapestries. Of course, that goes completely unnoticed by most people that come here. <laughs> 